Have you ever heard that on a given day, there were more sellers than buyers on the stock market? This is especially common during recessions when people are dumping billions of dollars of stock like Warren Buffett recently did with his $4 billion airline portfolio. But at the same time, we know that each stock sale needs a buyer for the transaction to go through. So in such scenarios, who is buying all of this stock? Well, first of all, when people or the media say that there were more sellers than buyers on the market, this means that there were more sellers than buyers at the opening of the market, not the entire day. So as the stock price drops, the pool of sellers and buyers is likely to equalize. And if it doesn't, then the stock price continues to drop until this statement becomes more or less true. But oftentimes, in recessions, it seems like everyone you know is selling and that no one is willing to buy. While it may seem like this from personal experience, this is basically never true, at least not for blue chip stocks or big company stocks. For instance, let's take Apple. Their average stock volume is about 50 million. This means that on average, 50 million shares are being traded every single day. The vast majority of any stock shares are traded during market hours, which is usually only 6 to 7 hours around the world. But to estimate conservatively, we'll say that Apple stock is traded at the same rate during pre-market and after hours. Nasdaq, which is the platform on which Apple stock is traded, is open from 4am to 8pm if you add in pre-market and after-market hours. So on any weekday, you have 16 hours to trade Apple stock. Given a daily volume of 50 million shares, this means that 868 shares of Apple stock is being traded every single second, or $270,000 worth. This comes out to 52,000 shares or $16 million worth of stock every single minute, and that's conservative. As you can see, even if you're trying to buy or sell millions of dollars worth of stock, this can be done in a matter of minutes. You might be saying, Apple is one of the world's biggest companies so the same volume cannot be expected for smaller companies. But this again is not true. Delta for instance only has a valuation that is nearly 1% of Apple's valuation. However, its average volume is still 46 million. The thing is, there are hundreds of mutual funds, hedge funds, and brokers themselves buying and selling mad volume every single day. So with these behemoths selling and buying mad volumes, Individual investors can pretty much always find a buyer or a seller despite how the market is performing overall. That's 90% of stocks. These stocks might go down for a couple of months or years, but it's expected that over long periods of time, they are still on an upward trend, keeping buyers interested. But there are also companies that go bankrupt and completely stop operation during a recession. So who is buying the shares of companies with terrible outlooks? Well, in many cases, it could be the company itself. Sure, you and your friends as well as all institutional investors may not believe in the company, but the company may still believe in the company. This was the case with Dell in the early 2010s. Investor confidence was plummeting as profits and revenue tumbled in 2012, and a majority of investors were looking to sell. To avoid pressure from investors and a bad public image, Michael Dell came in and essentially bought every last stock out there. Given the situation, 65% of his investors were ready to sell Dell stock and voted in favor of a buyout, and so Michael Dell was able to buy back all of Dell's shares for $25 billion, or $13.75 per share. Luckily for Dell, Mr. Dell was able to turn everything around and return to the market in the 40s per share in 2018. But even if Dell had gone bankrupt, the investors were able to cash out before the bankruptcy. And this is the same scenario with many companies with bad outlooks. The companies themselves are who are buying shares when everyone is selling. But at the same time, many of them don't have the cash or can't take out debt to buy back shares. So in cases where bankruptcy is inevitable, what happens to shareholders? Well, this depends on what type of bankruptcy we're talking about. The two main types are Chapter 11 and 7. In a Chapter 11 bankruptcy, the company is basically postponing financial obligations in order to buy some time to hopefully recover. In the meantime, shareholders can usually not sell any stock as there are literally no buyers available. However, 
If the company recovers like Delta, American Airlines, Converse, Six Flags, Marvel, or General Motors, who have all filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the past, shareholders will eventually regain the ability to sell shares. In fact, in such recoveries, there will often be more buyers than sellers, and I'm not sure if you would even want to sell. But in a Chapter 7 bankruptcy, your stock is nearly meaningless as the company is shutting down. Generally, the company's assets will be sold and then the debt will be paid off. If there is still any cash left over, shareholders will be paid back in accordance to their ownership. But generally, shareholders get no return in a Chapter 7 bankruptcy. Finally, there is one more scenario. Non-blue chip stocks or very small company stocks. These stocks are generally penny stocks or stocks worth under $5. These companies may have very small volume, and in such scenarios, it is actually possible for there to be no buyers, even when the company is performing as expected. But even for these companies, there are always buyers, but there may be no buyers at your desired price. And in such cases, the only solution is to wait until a buyer pops up, which could be a matter of days or even weeks, or reduce your asking price. So, in general, for blue chip stocks, no matter how the economy is doing or how many people are selling, there will always be buyers just because of the raw number of people and institutions interested in the company. For companies with a bad outlook however, the buyer could be the company itself. The only time you'll have trouble finding a buyer is for companies that are bankrupt or very close to it, as well as non-blue chip stocks. So if you're only investing in solid blue chip stocks, you'll never run into the problem of liquidity. If you guys thought this video explained liquidity concerns in the stock market well, then make sure to drop a like, and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.